Hi guys, welcome back to Form 6 Term 3. Uh, the next one we're going to see the last for the physical uh, optic is this. Uh, sorry, not the last, okay. The, the next part will be relic criteria, okay. Relic. Relic criterion or relic criteria, okay. Relic criteria. So this relic criteria is actually uh, a criteria used to find out what is the resolution of a lens system okay like a camera how good is your camera how good is a telescope and also how good is a uh, microscope and also how good is your eyes all right now before we start with relic criteria we will go back uh, uh flash back a little bit about our single slits okay our single slits uh interference okay now let's say you have a single slit okay this one is a story or the history of uh Okay, our history of single slit interference. Okay, single slit interference. We go back to the history now. Our single slit okay, interference okay, occur because of the Fraunhofer interference. Now, when a light enter our single slit with a size of A, it will cast or it will form an interference pattern here okay an interference pattern which has something that looks like this okay we have a center brightness okay we have center bright okay and then here we have dark after that is bright again and here also dark and bright so center brightness is double the size of uh, the other brightness okay so this is what we have but if we want to look at the intensity of the light based on this pattern now we're going to shift everything become horizontal okay so this is our interference pattern that we can observe from a single slit experiment let's say start from here okay this is a double slit uh, sorry single slit like that and here also the same we have this so our single uh the single slit one they are not consistent compared to double slit okay so if we look clearer this is shifting from vertical to horizontal so now this is our dark one on both sides this is a central bright band dark dark and so on okay so now we use this center one as our guideline to draw our intensity of light okay intensity of light and this one is our uh, sine theta or theta Okay, this is our sine theta and then this is our intensity of light no, sorry. intensity we use i okay intensity of light now we know that the light uh intensity is the highest for the center okay for the center so we mark it somewhere here and then of course the dark one we have zero intensity this one zero intensity and the same thing for this one here and also for this one okay dark and of course here you have bright but the bright one here is not that high compared to that two it might be lower something like this okay and then we have another bright one also somewhere around here and then this bright one is even lower okay this one will be even lower let's say somewhere here so ours here will be the same it will be somewhere around here so when we plot the graph, you're going to see something that looks like this, okay? So we're going to have graph that have this type of brightness, intensity like this, okay? Alright, so that is the graph of intensity against sine theta. So what are those values? This is zero, of course. This value here is uh, lambda over A. This one is a negative lambda over a mirror image. One on top, one on the bottom. Same thing. So this one will be 2 lambda over a. This is negative 2 lambda over a. And the next one will be negative 3 lambda over a. And the next one here is 3 lambda over a as well. So the difference between them, you see. The difference of the distance between them is lambda over a. And now the distance between here and here is 2 lambda over a. Uh, that is the difference between this one. 
So that means the central brightness is always double the width of the other brightness. Okay. So the formula that we use here is this. Our sine theta is equal to lambda over A. Okay. So which one is your dark? This is the first dark band. So if you want to go for a other dark band, you have to have sine theta. This is number one. Number two is equal to uh, what we call that. This is two lambda over a. So if we continue on like this, you're going to have sine theta m equal to m lambda over a. For example, number three, third one, you're going to have three lambda over a. Okay. So that is generally what happened under this. Okay. The shape, of course, you want to use this formula. It must have uh, what we call that. Uh, it must have something we call the size of the slit. The size of the slits must be consistent. Then you can use this formula. Okay. And then if the angle theta, if theta is very, very small, then your formula can even be reduced to something like this. Theta is equal to theta m is equal to m lambda over a. See? That is for the first one. and uh, Sorry, for any number. But normally, under Rayleigh criteria, we only use m equal to 1. Because m equal to 2, uh, m equal to 2, 3, and so on, there are, the intensity of light is very, very low. You can see that. So it's not important to us. So we want to know only this part. All right? So, uh, why is this thing important? Because when you talk about single slip interference, our eyes is the single slit, okay? And then, a camera lens is a single slit, okay? Telescope is a single slit, and of course, binocular is not, but binocular is a double single slit, okay? Double single slit, you cannot combine them together because your eyes are separated, okay? Your eyes are separated, so we still treat them as single slit. So now, what is uh, the relic criteria or something that we call... Uh, resolution okay resolution that is what we want to know next so next the history already done here so we need to know this and later on we're going to use that one for the relic criteria and then next one is the words resolution okay resolution so what is resolution so resolution is uh, uh, the ability, okay, the ability of a lens, okay, ability of a lens to distinguish two very close object, okay. So resolution of a lens is the ability of the lens to distinguish okay to distinguish two very close objects for example you have a car light okay so you see that we draw a two dimensional uh three dimensional try to become a three dimensional lah. so now this is you're on the road this is the white line of the road now i have a car Okay, shining light on you. When the car is uh, very near to you, of course, you can see that two light separated. So, you know that there's a car. Okay, so we draw these two lines to represent the front part of the car. Okay, this one is very near, so you can, you can distinguish them. And then the further they go, okay, the further they go, the light will not only become smaller, but now they'll become nearer. Okay, they'll, so they become nearer. So, now your car looks further and the light source become nearer. And then the further you go, you're going to see that by, by the time you reach a certain distance, your eyes can hardly distinguish that two light source. It looks like a one single light source. Okay, so if we use this one as our perspective uh, line, it means that there is a certain distance that our eyes can see them as two separate things. Okay, so when it become too far, we cannot see them as two separate light source, so it might look like a motorbike. So you cross the road. If this guy traveling fast, by the time you cross the road, 
suddenly one motorbike become two motorbike, which is actually a car. So uh, that is some scary part. Okay, but sometimes accident do happen because uh, one of the light is gone. So all the time people assume there's a motorbike. So they try if this one is on this one is dead so you don't see the light here so you move so you try to avoid that one but finally you are still hitting by this part of the car so it's a very dangerous thing okay so now that is just our daily life event that can happen eh, under this category other than that it can be something like a star system in the sky a binary star that is very far using our eyes to see the star it looks like one single star but if you are using a very powerful telescope where the resolution of the telescope is very high okay then you can see that there are actually two stars orbiting around each other okay so uh after uh, after we have uh, invented telescope and then uh, uh make a better technology using a good telescope we realize that most of the stars in the sky are binary star so every time you look into the sky, look at stars, you can actually expect them to be a binary star. Okay, binary star. Some are triple star. Okay, so those are the wonder in astronomy. Okay, there are a lot of discovery now there because we have good telescope. All right, now resolution. So now we want to look at uh, the criterion, uh, relic criteria. Okay, the relic criteria. So resolution you already have, huh? All right. Okay, now we are going to use a concept here to get a formula uh, uh, to describe relic criteria. So now we come to relic criteria. Okay. Okay, relic criteria. So, relic criteria. That's that. Okay. Two very close object. Okay. Okay. Is uh, what we call that resolvable. Okay. Resolvable. Okay. Is resolvable by a lens if the maxima of the intensity okay of the intensity of uh, this diffraction is exactly okay exactly on top of the first minima or minimum okay on top of the first minimum of the other okay diffraction okay what happened here is this uh, of course using this word here uh, it's not easy to understand now let's assume you have a lens system Okay, you have a lens system here. This is our lens. And then we have two objects here. Okay, two objects here. Uh, let's say the object are uh, actually quite close to each other. Okay, very close to each other. And then we have uh, some system to observe. Okay, like a camera system and so on. So what happened here is, we always use the center of the lens as our guide. So this is what happened here. Object number one will produce uh this one okay will produce uh you know this interference here single slit interference okay because it's only one lens right so single slit so we have this maximum here so we draw the maximum line on the other part of the graph here so this is where the heat this is where the maximum central maximum hit the screen so our maximum will be here so we draw only one, uh, two maximum. Okay. Okay. That is maximum number one. 
and then for the second one okay second one it will produce another light ray okay another light ray at different location this is our location for the second one okay this is a maximum location for the second one so our maximum here all right now you see that it's very clear that these two lines are totally separated the maximum of the object number one okay is here and the maximum for object number two is here so they are separated so as long as they are separated when you put your eyes here you can actually see them then you can actually see them as two separate object okay now if let's say we put the object further now what you can you can imagine when it is further so our lens is still the same okay the lens is still the same uh lens is here our this one is roughly 4 cm so it is somewhere here this is the screen or the sensor but our object is very far away now we put it further right here let's say it's still the same distance the distance between them is roughly one centimeter okay it's about one centimeter here and here so this is our object one and two this is scenario number one this is number two now now we still have the same light entering here number one and then of course this is number two using the same point okay number two is here now so now when we draw the same light ray this is our screen okay our screen is here so when we draw our light ray maximum is here for this one okay for number one and then number two is this one this is a maximum now so our maximum is here this is number two okay so in this case we can still see because you see that this maximum is still not on the minimum of the second refraction okay a uh, diffraction sorry and then the second maximum here is still not at the minimum of the first diffraction so that means this one still can be observed they okay? still can be observed this one we can can be resolved okay can be resolved this one also can be resolved but they are actually very near now all right so now we're going to draw another condition where the light is not going to be resolved now you cannot see them as two object okay as two object so that is our diagram number three now okay we're going to draw that object quite far away but we need a guideline here very far for example like this okay the lens is here now okay the lens is here and then our screen is roughly one two three four four centimeter away and our actual screen is here what we are seeing here so our object now is separated by one cm still the same distance okay, still the same distance except now it's much much further okay, it's much much further so now we are drawing the light ray from number one okay from number one pass through the center of the lens here and number two pass through also the center of the lens is here now so you can see that the difference is very clear this is our first maximum okay number one and our second maximum is here this is our second maximum so our second maximum okay so what happened next is you see this the first diffraction there okay, the first diffraction the maximum is exactly on top of the minimum of the second diffraction okay and then the second maximum from the second light source is now at the minimum the first minimum of the first diffraction so that means 
this is a condition that we call okay okay uh, just okay just resolvable okay just resolvable this is important this is where you apply just resolvable now we draw another diagram to show the condition where it is impossible to be resolved okay impossible to be resolved okay so what happened is we still put the object in the same location somewhere around here but our lens is going to be very very far now somewhere around here we're going to see what happened next to it so this is our lens and this is four centimeter from the lens one two three four here okay and this is our observable lens okay our object is still the same location here and here so this is our object object one and two now if we draw our light ray you can imagine how near they get okay how near they will become number one and number two okay so now they are here okay so our first light ray okay this is our first light ray somewhere here okay number one and number two second one is here so our light is almost overlapping see or not so number two so now their maximum is not is already inside they are almost overlapping so in this case you cannot actually see them a separate this one cannot be resolved okay cannot be resolved okay cannot be resolved so that is our condition okay so that means when you are far uh, when the object is near the lens or near you it can be resolved easily this one not that far but still can be resolved and then number two this is the limit of your resolution okay this is the limit by the time it go beyond this limit it cannot be resolved you see or not when that that two light ray are they are already inside their minimum okay so it cannot be resolved so criteria this is where your relic criteria is applied okay so relic criteria is applied here under this condition so we always want to know this condition because anything after this is useless you have a microscope you have a camera when two persons stay near to each other and it cannot even resolve you look like one person there okay so that means the optical instrument is useless on that condition already okay so everything has its limits even microscope microscope maximum you can uh, amplify magnify is like 1000 times optical okay so that's why we need some other type of microscope like electron microscope okay quantum tunneling microscope and so on telescope also the same telescope why we need a very good quality of lens and also as large lens as possible okay so that is the purpose right now under relic criteria okay relic criteria says that if okay if theta is very very small compared to one okay theta is very very small compared to one the theta is actually equal to uh oh we call that the lambda of the optical light you use divide by the opening okay the opening of the uh lens okay the opening of the lens where the lambda is the wavelength okay the wavelength of light observe okay the wavelength of the light you use to observe and then your a the opening the size of the opening okay the size of the opening opening of the lens okay the lens but we know one thing if you look at this formula it's actually quite the same like the one i showed just now okay this one the formula is if you have only look at the first order then your m is equal to one 
but what is the difference between small air and big air okay if you look at the slits okay if the slit is rectangle or rectangular okay rectangular then your theta is equal to lambda over a so not no problem the size of the slit where a is the size of slit the okay, size of slit but if the slit is circular like camera lens your pupil in your eyes and so on then our theta will become lambda over the a now is the diameter of the lens divided by 1.22 what is this actually because if you look at the rectangular slits this is the size of the slit this is a is everywhere uniform they are the same but when you come to circular shape ah, the problem is in the circular shape you can have different value of the okay, different value of a you have a1 a2 a3 a4 and millions of them so we take the average a okay we take the average a value or the width average a it will be your a1 plus blah 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 until a n divided by n well of course you cannot do that because uh circular shape you have millions of dots don't waste your time doing that experiment we know that this value from derivation of formula in mathematics under integration the average a value is given by the diameter of the lens okay this is the diameter of the lens divided by 1.22 okay divided by 1.22 so conclusion is theta under relic criteria is lambda over d divided by 1.22 so it become 1.22 over d okay so that's why for any circular aperture anything that is circular you are using this formula rather than this one okay so there's a difference between uh, aperture that is rectangular in size compared to the aperture that is circular in size okay so uh, that is the formula to calculate of course here we don't use sine theta because the angle can be considered very very small when you try to resolve something okay so that means uh, we can actually like for example uh, increase the ability of a lens or a system to make things uh, what we call it to resolve things even to a smaller degree okay so that means we can make the angle as small as possible if we want by like putting the lens make it the diameter become bigger okay become bigger and then what else you can actually use a shorter wavelength but shorter wavelength that we can see using our eyes is violet color okay violet color of course you can use shorter wavelength like ultraviolet but our eyes cannot see